This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Jack Threads. Coming up on Destructoid, Dragon's Dogma is definitely becoming a Dragon's franchise. New Super Mario Bros. 2 is reviewed and sexy nude leaked photos of the Xbox 720 dev kit. Seriously, all that and more right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Tara, how are you? Ah, oh, I feel great. Thank you. Are you, you. okay? Yes. Feeling better? Scared me a little bit. Yes. I feel a little bit better. Um, I'm still sick, as you can probably tell from my voice, but I'm going to see the doctor tomorrow, so I'll keep you guys updated tell on my medical your, status. Just all of the personal embarrassing medical mm -hmm. details. That is a bitchin' shirt, I by the way. I thank you for saying that, because look at this shirt. You look at this shirt, you're like, oh, it's just a normal, yeah, sure. it's a normal maiden of the macabre. Oh, no, no. It is shit. a vampire queen. I got this shirt at a clearance rack at a theme park gift store. That is a surprise to hear. Uh, yeah, anyway. Think you look great. Did not come from Jack Threads. I should clarify that now. Let's get into the news about yes, games. Yes, why don't we? Now, the third release in this year's Xbox Live Summer of Arcade is Deadlight, and that's coming out this week. It is a survival horror cinematic puzzle platformer side scroller. Hmm. So most of the genres. I put up my review of it this morning over on Rev3 Games. That's our other channel that you should be subscribed to already. And Jim Sterling put up his written review on Destructoid.com and I agreed with a lot of what he had to say. How convenient. Yes. Jim stressed how much potential the game has from the start, calling the opening act magnificent and praising Deadlight's ability to be scary for the player in spite of the distant side-scroller perspective, uh, as well as its gorgeous visuals. I can vouch for this, and early on I will say the game shows so much promise. It, you get those kind of butterflies in your stomach and you're like, once I'm past the tutorial, this is going to be so good. However, in the second act, Deadlight goes from zombie-infested Seattle into an underground maze of booby traps with this random crazy guy named the Rat, and a few things happen. For starters, the entire zombie storyline just kind of gets backburnered and sidetracked for the sake of this dumb obstacle course. And second, you start to notice that while the puzzles aren't becoming any more challenging or enjoyable in the fun way, the level design really starts to highlight how bad the controls are. In the third act, the control problems get glaringly worse when you're suddenly forced into combat and chase sequences. Uh, in addition to that, the story, which is just derivative, horribly written, and ridiculously voice acted, becomes increasingly heavy-handed with its, you know, angst and delivery, and suddenly you're supposed to care, and it's just, just, just zombies, just, just give us the zombies. Jim gave Deadlight a four out of 10, saying, I don't think I've ever seen a game that manages to start so strong and get progressively worse, and if you want to see just how far a game can fall from greatness to squalor in the span of a handful of hours, then Deadlight is for you. Um, I would definitely recommend going and reading Jim's review over on Destructoid.com, which um, I feel like it hits the nail on the head really hard. I was a little bit more forgiving when, in uh, my review over on Rev3 Games, which you should watch. Uh, but I think the bottom line is, is the same thing, which is save your money. That's which disappointing. Is, it's a pity. It looked so good. So you'd give the first half a 10 out of 10 perfect score? I would give it like a, I, I would say it goes like maybe like 8.5, like like 5.5 and then I'd four-ish towards. That's I, disappointing. I, maybe, I don't know. If, you, if the third act was by itself, it's just like, mm -hmm. get out of here. Well, speaking of Jim's reviews, uh, you talked about your experience with New Super Mario Bros. 2, I think on last Friday's show. Oh God, um, I and wasted breath on that. Yeah, although the game doesn't come out uh, for, I think, another three weeks, uh, Jim Sterling put up his review on Destructoid.com today. And uh, needless to say, if you played the original New Super Mario Bros. that came out for the DS back in 2007, then you're like already halfway familiar with this one because it is very similar from what I understand. If you played Mario, you're already yeah. very similar with this. It's Mario. Yeah. Um, but even the layout of the game is the same. You've got six main worlds. Um, each one has its own stages, its own mini boss, and a Koopa Kid boss. Um, and then there's two extra worlds that you can unlock with mini mushrooms. Uh, but really, aside from some new enemy types, the gameplay from the original is pretty much intact, uh, which is fine, really, because the, the real gimmick here is the coins. Got to get that money. Uh, so whereas in previous games, like, the coins really meant nothing more than currency, like you could, you know, get one-ups and shit with them, now you actually have a goal aside from rescu rescuing the princess, and that goal is to collect one million coins. So on top of the thousands of coins, scattered around any given level, there's also tons of other ways to earn them. So there's invisible checkpoints you can pass where you get coins. There's a new golden fire flower that just like rains money everywhere. Uh, there's also a coin rush mode now where you run through three randomly selected stages just trying to catch as many coins as possible. So if you're a completionist or just one of those people who really likes collecting a lot of loot, uh, 
then this is probably right up your alley. And I'm kind of that person, so yeah, I'm super Diablo. A little world. more excited about this, I gotta say. Um, Jim did say that while the quest for coins makes it a much more addictive game, it does take away a lot of the replay value that the original new Super Mario Brothers had. Um, and also the two-player local co-op just slightly mitigates this by offering both players double coins when they're playing together. Uh, but then you have to share a single screen, which just takes the magic out of it instantly. So he couldn't recommend that, unfortunately. Uh, he did give the game a 7 out of 10 overall, pra praising its level design, its solid platforming, and its wealth of optional content. Though he was disappointed with the fact that it felt more like an expansion with a gimmick than a whole new game. So that's his, uh, his words on the matter. Uh, you can read his full review over on Destructoid.com. 7 out of 10, not as bad as it's I was expecting, bad. to be quite honest. I was expecting honest. about that, because yeah. I mean, it's a totally capable game. My, my time with it was just like, this is this is just like Mario. It's this hard is, for Nintendo to make a terrible game. It's really easy for them to make a mediocre one, I think. That's a nice, that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. You should put some quotes around that and put that on some boxes somewhere. They should put that on Print a commercial, some stickers huh? and take that and put on Nintendo games. Anyway, you guys remember uh, Dragon's Dogma? That was Capcom's big ass open world action RPG where you could pick up pigs and throw them at stuff. That's what I took away from the game. Uh, I know a lot of people got really into it. It was, it was a pretty hardcore thing. They were really stoked about it. But it wasn't exactly the wide, widespread mainstream hit in the West that Capcom might have been hoping for. Um, it has, however, sold well enough to warrant a sequel, according to some important facts and figures. Dragon's Dogma shipped over a million copies worldwide, and they are happy to announce that this sets the stage for Dragon's Dogma to become a series. Hopefully Pig Thrower 3D 2 will be uh, very popular. Anyway, on a less thrilling note, Resident Evil Raccoon City shipped 450,000 copies across the board, which is less impressive, especially for a popular franchise like Resident Evil. But, uh, you know, it's not super surprising considering that that game was sort of just an answer to a question that nobody asked. And there's millions of them. Mm. There's like the Resident Evil games, like, in between the actual numbers, well, there are. That one was just much. like, it was like, what if Resident Evil is like a deathmatch thing? And maybe Capcom will listen to me next time when I say they should just make a game about an actual Raccoon City. That would that sell. That you can throw pigs in. I don't I just usually agree with animals. his ideas, but that would sell my <laughs> friends. Um, and overall, Capcom's profits are up 290%, sales are up 56%, and they've met all projections, so that's really good. They were actually, uh, they were they were doing so hot, um, you know, yeah. like last year, so this is good for them. Good yeah, job, that Capcom. is good. Good you, job, Capcom. You may help yourself to something from the prize cabinet. <laughs> the prize cabinet. Is it a lollipop? It's it not the root beer flavored ones, is it? It could be a ring, who knows? Ooh, could be a cool coach shit. ball. So good job, Capcom, and good job to whoever leaked these photos of Microsoft's next-gen dev kit this morning. Yeah, that was a good thing to wake up to. Uh, someone posted five photos of the Durango dev kit to assemblergames.com, and of course they've been taken down since. Uh, but this is the internet, and what is seen cannot be unseen, for better or for worse. So we have pictures of them to show you. Um, it's nothing too exciting, of course, since a dev kit doesn't really give us a picture of what the actual retail console is going to look like. But Digital Foundry has done some research and confirmed that the photos are in fact legitimate. Uh, they said that they were, they said the images were, quote, acknowledged as genuine by reliable sources we know to be working on AAA next gen games. And according to another source, the actual system is said to be 64-bit and is going to allow for porting over existing DirectX 11 engines from PC to Durango. I love seeing leaked photos, because I'm always like, how do these people keep a secret for so long? And then I realize you and I have to do it all the time for our jobs, and I don't like think twice about it. Yeah. But something that big that people would pay so many thousands of dollars to just like have m information and photos on, like, yeah. it's amazing. And also, how do they not trace back the EXIF data on that photo to find out who leaked them? You know, like how, like whenever somebody posts a video of like abusing animals, 4chan will always like they'll find that person and track them down. Hmm. Microsoft should hire 4chan to trace down their leaked photos. Yeah, I was just gonna say that it's just like a, it's funny because it's like a picture of a computer tower. Yeah. yeah, but the data is hidden within the photo. You can't the even see it. files are in the computer. I know. Whoa. I that's, know. That's great. I, I, I will say that I have seen some better leaked photos. I have in my too. Time. Rihanna. Miley Cyrus XXX. Miley Cyrus <clears throat> still hasn't done that. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, only suckers pay full price for clothes. That's a fact. That it's is a, a fact. It's a dumb thing. Don't just just don't go out there and waste all your money on clothes. However. 
you should spend money on clothes. And if you love alter alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but hate wasting all your cash on them, listen up. You can score these premium brands at up to 80% off every day. It is a new invite-only shopping club just for guys called Jack Threads. It is serving up street, skate, and surfwear brands at prices that will literally go inside your brain and melt it. Um, I, when I say it's a new members only shopping club, it's, it's been around for like a year, but it's still cool. There is a wait list to join, but if you head to dragthreads.com slash destruct, you will get instant access to all sorts of clothing. You should go and do that now. There's also a bunch of weird tchotchkes on there. Tara, I got you a present on there. What? Really? I did. I don't have it yet, but you wait your turn. Is it a yakit? It's not a yakit. Oh. It's something much, much weirder. They have oh. some really cool weird tchotchkes I'm excited. On there. I'm going to go yeah. onto their website tonight and narrow Try it down. Try and guess. Good yes. luck with that. <gasps> All right, back to the show. So the Olympics are happening this week in London, and since none of us can actually afford the tickets or press credentials to go to them, we here at Revision 3 decided to host our own Olympics all week long, starting today with our first event, competitive fingling. And if that sounds dirty, it's because it is. Mm. Team Rev3 Games, composed of Max and myself, we went head-to-head -to -head today against Team App Judgment and Team Techzilla. Those are two of Revision 3's other shows, if you're not familiar. We went head-to-head -head in a friendly game of Fingle, which is a sexually suggestive iOS game involving the use of fingers, and I will say I no more we're, than that. I we went really head-to-head. -head. I'd say it was more just mano a mano, you yeah. know, hand-to-hand, -hand, if you will. Yes. You can check that out over on youtube.com slash appjudgment. In the meantime, why don't you tell them about E3, Max? That's a really good question. If it seems ridiculous to be talking about E3 2013 already, that's because it's a really stupid thing to be talking about already. Uh, it hasn't even been two months since this year's E3. However, the Entertainment Software Association just announced the dates for next year's convention, which will be happening June 11th to June 13th. As for the location, the ESA actually had a dispute with the city of Los Angeles earlier this year concerning the construction of some sort of sports dome-like stadium Ugh. thing that they were gonna be doing building downtown. Now a lot of people have been speculating that E3 would be, would be changing venues and going to some faraway place and those rumors reached a fever pitch on Friday when a senior VP at the ESA tweeted, hey guys on Monday I'll be making a big announcement regarding E3 2013 so be sure to follow me for updates and spread the word. Hashtag E3 2013. Pfft. Tara, tell them One the big announcement. One person has used that hashtag so far. The big announcement is <clears throat> E3 will remain in LA until 2015. That's a big announcement right that, there. That's the announcement. They, that's... A, a thing that has been a, like a certain way for a while will continue to do so as such for several more years. <laughs> that's great. Very exciting. You know what's more exciting than that announcement? This great shirt that I have. <laughs> but seriously, that what, is a great it shirt, does though. raise a question, where would we want E3 to be? Um, and the answer is a volcano in space. Fiji. Cool. Fiji be... or... Las Vegas or Austin. Both the last two suggestions were made by our producer Zach, but I'm stealing them because they're really makes good. Sense. Um, yeah, I mean it's it, the thing is LA is uh, downtown LA is it's you're like you look at it and you're like those are just some buildings with some sidewalks by them. What's the big deal? And then you get there and they're like, oh, these are giant. This yeah. is like this is out of out of it's like GI Joe at Barbie's house. You're like everything is too big here. Pretty and much. And then somebody somebody will be peeing next to you. That's oh, just, sure. well, and that's then they will just, mug you while they're peeing everywhere. That's downtown in any big city. This is true. That's why I think we should move it to Detroit. Or the Let's moon. Up the ante. Or Fiji. Yep. No people in Fiji. Well, some, but the yeah. good kind. Well, I don't know. That's that's cool. Um, that's a really dumb announcement, though. Yeah. Yep. Austin would still be cool this and centrally located. This guy wants more followers. He should maybe tweet out some leaked photos of stuff. <laughs> like maybe just take a picture of the show floor of E3 oh, 2013. Yeah. Be like, here it is. And it's like, that looks like a, a bridal convention. It's like, that's because E3 isn't for like a year. What do you want? I bet they do have tons of bridal I'm conventions so, I wish we were. I wish this was a bridal coverage show, because <laughs> we'd probably have bigger news than that E3 is going to continue to do what it does. All right. Anyway. Enough bridal talk. Uh, that is all the time that we have for today's episode. If you guys want to keep up with us outside of the show, you should totally go follow us on Twitter. Like, totally. It's, it's all what the cool kids are doing. Um, I'm on there at Tara Longest. He is Max Scoville. And together, we are The Detoid Show. We'll see you guys back here on Wednesday, won't we? Yeah. Hey guys, look at my shirt. It's a vampire. Put those things bride. away. Ooh.